Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. Calico Light Weapon Systems released their first commercial firearm, the 22 Rimfire M100 carbine, in 1986 and quickly adapted the technology to a 9mm version in 1987, the M900. They also produced a pistol version of the 9mm, the M950, which is what I have here. Unlike the earlier 22 Rimfire M100, which utilized a simple blowback action, the M900 and M950 used a roller delayed system for the higher powered 9mm cartridge. This is the same basic system as used in the famed H&K MP5. I covered this in more detail in a prior video, I'll try to put a link to that in this one, and today we're going to take a look at the field strip procedure for the M950. And of course before working on any firearm you need to make sure it's free and clear of all ammunition. The first step would be to remove the magazine. The magazine on the Calico M950 is right here, the drum, and it's held in place by two catches on either side. There's one here and one here, and to release those you would simply just squeeze in. There's some little grip surfaces there on either side, and you'd simply push in on both of those and the magazine lifts out. As we can see the magazine is free and clear. That gives you quick visual access into the loading port and the chamber area. So you just need to pull the charging handle back and we can see that the chamber area is also free and clear. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the controls and features of the Calico M950. The M950 utilizes a helical drum magazine uh, which uses a clockwork spring to rotate the ammunition around feeding it forward as it goes. As far as the firearm itself, it's an aluminum receiver which has polymer uh, little, the, the, the foreend and then polymer grip. The front sight is adjustable for windage and elevation. There's two knurled wheels on either side. Uh, there's one here, this is up, operates the windage, left and right, and this wheel operates the elevation. The charging handle is on the left side. It is not ambidextrous, it is only on the one side. The safety is right here in front of the trigger, and it currently it is listed as F for fire. Go ahead. Once you charge the handle, you can then put it on safe. Of course, you have the S for safe. And as I said, it is ambidextrous, it is on both sides. This is your bolt lock. It is a manual bolt lock. Uh, this does not lock open on the last round. There's no provision for it in the design. So to lock the bolt back, you would simply push in on this section here when the bolt's pulled back. And you can lock it there in a half position or all the way back like so. Then you push in on the front of the lever that would release the bolt. And as far as other controls and features that's pretty much it. Uh, the rear sight is a rear notch that's located in the drum itself. It's got a little two dot arrangement there. This is the clockwork spring winding mechanism. Once you load the magazine you would wind it up the specified number of times. Uh, this particular magazine holds 50 rounds and as you can see it's a very very compact form factor. Now there were some accessories that they made for this firearm. Uh, one was a front compensator or flash hider and it was pinned on. You can see the little indentation in the barrel here where the pin would go through. Uh, they also make an attachment that hooks into the front hole there on this front uh, sight tower and then goes and clamps onto the barrel and it basically suspends a rail in this section right here uh, that would hold, you can hold a lighter, a laser. They also make a, a scope or a top rail assembly that would screw on over top of this utilizing these screw holes here on either side. And then that would put a rail that would go above the magazine. At that point, to load the magazine, you would have to 
slide it out as opposed to just go going straight in. Overall, it locks up surprisingly tight, um, which is a little bit of a surprise because it looks, in in all actuality, the fit and finish is, is not really super great on these firearms. Uh, you've got, you know, exposed, you know, pins that it's just not finished well. The, the stamped metal, it looks, in all honesty, it, it just looks kind of cheap. Uh, it's thin and it just doesn't give you a, a whole lot of a confidence inspiring uh, as far as uh, to how they uh, are put together and uh, that was one of the main drawbacks that they had uh, for what they cost uh, you had the high capacity magazine other than that you know the styling was a little odd uh, it is a overall it's not super heavy uh, but it, it is awkward so the submachine gun version of this uh, would, of course, have a collapsing stock. Basically, the pistol part remained the same, had a collapsing stock, and then the full automatic uh, assembly fire control, which this, of course, is the semi-automatic version. So, um, sling swivel mounts, which you can mount the slings on either side by swapping the bolts around. Uh, on the rear, the sling hooks up to that rear screw. You could swap it around to the other side. Uh, to put the, the slings on either side. Uh, there's supposed to be a cover that goes over this, so this would, uh, to, if you wanted to store anything in there, uh, the cover has been lost to time. Uh, so it is a bottom eject, so the magazine feeds the ammunition through this port right here. When you fire, it ejects out the bottom. Here's your disassembly pin, that single pin there, when you pull that out, the front forend will slide off. This rear pistol grip assembly, this entire piece, will slide off as a unit. And uh, then that allows you access into uh, to the bolt and to the fire control uh, assembly. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Uh, just basically pull the handle back a little bit to get a hold of the pin. Pull the pin out, front comes off, here's your the spring that's just for the charging handle. It is a, a uh, non-reciprocating handle, so it's just used to cock it back, it's not attached to the bolt. Once that pin's removed, let me release the uh, striker, then you can slide the frame off. On the inside here, you have your sear and disconnector. This is the safety it actually physically locks the bolt when you put it on safe that pops up and locks the bolt in place that's also why you uh, well actually locks the striker in place that's also why you can't put it on safe unless it is cocked uh, because the hammer would be on top of that so as far as the various parts here go ahead and remove the charging handle and its spring this is our bolt and linear hammer assembly. So basically you just uh, push in a little bit on the springs and lift out. And there's that assembly. Uh, this part here, you can see where the rollers go in. They engage right there on either side and here's the rollers right there as you can see they they go in when the bolt goes all the way into battery it pushes those rollers out those rollers will lock into the recesses in the frame here and that's what uh, is the uh, delayed uh, roller lock and uh, of course then just have your chamber here uh, this is as far as you would ever need to disassemble any of this it's pretty much fully uh, uh stripped down now uh, you could get access to everything clean it all out scrub it up good we have a look at our bolt assembly here those are our recoil springs this is our striker spring uh, i keep saying striker technically this is a hammer it's a linear hammer and as you can see right here the hammer actually strikes the back of the firing pin 
which is right there. And when that hits the firing pin, of course it drives it forward and protrudes right here and fire the cartridge. This is our extractor right here. And uh, that's pretty much the assembly. Now this can be disassembled. Uh, you would simply push in on the springs a little bit to remove tension and then this plate will slide off. Like so. And then you can remove the linear hammer. Then you just have your roller assembly. To remove this, you'd have to drive a pin out. I'm not going to disassemble this any further uh, because the pin goes into this section right here. That pin also holds the extractor and spring on. So uh, this is as far as you'd really need to ever disassemble it. Uh, you can get access to everything to clean it out good. Further disassembly, uh, it's just a little bit of a challenge to get everything balanced in there and, and lined up correctly because there's spring tension as well. Uh, so a little bit difficult to do. Reassembly is just the opposite. First you put in your linear hammer. It has its own little guide rod there. And then make sure it's in the proper position. And rotate it out of the way. Then push your springs in. And line that up like so. And as you can see, the, the little rod has just some indentations on it. right there that goes into the slot there on that back plate. Just like so. Reassembly. This little U metal piece here that the springs are on. When you push it forward you can see the front of the U right there. That goes into this little channel right here. So just like so, and then just push forward on that back plate there and push it down, and pull the slide back there. Just make sure it's not can move freely, and uh, that's pretty much reassembled. Slide your grip assembly on. It engages in the little grooves that are right there on either side. We'll engage in the corresponding grooves right there on either side. Just like so. Well, don't forget to put your spring and your charging rod back on. It just goes right there and there's a little little saddle for it right here that holds it in place and it just engages the bolt assembly right there to push it back and slide your grip forward put the forend section on and put your pin in and pull the charging handle back a bit and it's all reassembled. Do a function check. Reset. Even though most people think that the company went out of business long ago, these futuristic drum-fed firearms are still manufactured and supported by Calico light weapons today, although you rarely see them in gun stores these days. They were an oddity when they were first introduced, and they remain so to this day. Their appearance leaves you either loving it or wondering why anyone would ever want one. I for one like them, even though I admit they're kind of quirky. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.